here. What I will do is, um, like maybe the Saturday afternoon, they'll do their roast, and they'll take it right out to the oven with an internal temperature of about 140, maybe 150 degrees. And they stick it in a blast chiller to bring down that internal <coughs> temperature to 40 degrees, meaning. Right? And it, well, it brings it from 140 to 40, depends on the size of the rose. It can be anywhere from four hours to eight hours. But if you put that in a regular refrigerator, 25 degree box, it's going to take like two days. Okay? The food is not going to spoil because it's pre cooked. But it's going to take two days before the internal temperature uniformly gets to 40 degrees. Nobody has that time. And you see, if you spend that time, leave your food to cook outside for two days, it loses taste. So this is like from, from the oven right to, to the prep table to the customer's plate. Right because the next morning, it doesn't take much for them to put this in, the, um, in an oven and keep it warm. You know, bring up temperature to wherever. And then they put it under the heat lamps and that keeps it warm and, you know, quite honestly, the, the food, they do not lose any quality where the food is concerned. It tastes just as good as if it was just cooked. It doesn't dry up. And it does, no, it don't. Because, here, yeah, it cannot dry up. You <coughs> cook, lock the moisture in there, right? If you, you go, um, yeah. if you pre-cook a roast to 140, that's, um, that's rare. Then it's going to have carried over heat. So while you're blasting, the internal will develop the carryover heat to 160 while the external is getting dropped. So it locks all the flavor or whatever in there. And then it uh, cools everything down as you get to the center. That day. So when you slice now, not, none of the uh, juices or anything will run out. It is. Trust me, it is. You don't lose any flavor or anything. No texture, no nothing. Really, really and allows you to do a lot with your food. Okay? So, blast chillin. The one thing you don't want to do is go, when they have these big blast chillers, you know, like big walk-in room that they use to, to pre-freeze product before they package them for shipment. Get those rooms are like negative 40. Guys, dress really, really well before you go in these rooms. Is it you're going like this, you can only last about half a minute, if that much. Okay. And you have to be careful how you walk on the floor because those floors are, those rooms are so dry that your boot tends to stick, especially if it has a little moisture in it, it tends to stick on the floor and when you walk the boot stays frozen <laughs> and your feet come off and you put your feet on the floor. Mm -hmm. That's a fucking water like that and that ain't the easy, the nicest of feeling. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be careful with these. And I'll tell you something. Getting a freezer born is worse than getting born with a torch. Way, way worse. See, you get born with fire, your body heals itself. You get freezer born and any thing or anything, they have to cut it off. Right? There's no if, ands, or buts about that. They have to cut it off. They can't save it. Or if you choose to keep it, you're going to die in, a, in about two weeks or something. Yeah, nice thought, right? <laughs> imagine, imagine every morning you wake up looking at the thing and say, I have nine more days to go. <laughs> I only have eight more days. Did you do? That's crazy. No, that ain't crazy. That's the truth. That's how you get that gangrene. Yeah, it's becoming. You know, gangrene would infect the whole of your body, and then you come down and say, Lord, tomorrow is my last day, Lord. Uh -huh. Then people discover that there is a God. Uh -huh. So, now, truck refrigeration, guys. You know, trucks will travel like from all the way up north. Come here. Go down south, make it to Florida. 
All right. Now, up north, what would the temperature be like compared to Florida? Cool. Much cool. colder. Yeah, it's going to be cold compared to Florida. Not cool. It's going to be cold. So that truck refrigeration system has to have the ability to go from this climate to that climate to that climate, any which climate in any one of the 48 states. In any order. In any order. Not necessarily coming from north, go straight south, non-stop. Yeah. It may go northwest, it may go to California for us. Then it may go to Maine, which is a miserable piece of race when it decides to be miserable. <laughs> And um, red wines, by the way. Then it may end up in Boston, then come out to Long Island, out at Montauk. Yeah, the reefy units. You know, the trails. Yes. You see them on the nose of so, the trails. Yeah, so they have to be able to go from one climate to the other without having to, you having to go physically do something to the refrigeration system to adapt to that climate. So they have to be really good systems and very adaptable systems. So that being said, you guys finish right here. Last night. So before the days of refrigeration, they actually used to pack ice around your product. And uh, then that guy who invented beers. Kenny Aldridge. Who? Yeah. The guy who don't know nothing about it. Yeah, the guy who don't know nothing. Where is he? Oh, shit. Where is he? Who are you looking for? You just call the name and I can't see the guy. Where's on the lights? He's not talking me. Thank you, kind sir. I lose a few on the lights. I can see you. <laughs> so, I lose a few. That's a refrigeration. <laughs> refrigeration maintains the quality of a product at least until you're ready to use it. Of course, there's expiration dates and everything. So, you see where we have to go from California with the lettuce, right up to Alaska with the same load of lettuce, but at negative 10 degrees. Not that nice, but this unit has to be able to work in that temperature zone. Mm -hmm. And as you travel from here to there, it has to adjust to whatever temperature changes goes in until it gets to that and still maintain proper operation. We think it's one of the things I need to install in this unit to make it do that. Low oh, ambient control. Yeah. Low ambient temperature control. Low ambient temperature is one of them. Is that yeah. pressure regulation? Yeah. yeah. HBR. Yeah, HBR. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we need head pressure yeah. um, control for these systems. And. Why? You would think you could just, like, you know, maybe have louvers that they opened up, let some fresh air in there when it's minus 10 degrees. Get, no, a, get see, a little free refrigeration. See, um, yeah, right. see, one of the things is, if you do that with the louvers, right? Yes. right? The speed at which these trucks go, they may break that louver. You may not have the strength. Because those louvers are actually operated by the pressure in the refrigeration system. Uh -huh. So it's operated by refrigerant. So if you have a lot of back pressure from the air, that's coming into that loop because of the speed of this truck. Then you, you're back pressure in the refrigeration system. And you don't want to be losing, like, this is the middle of the country, middle of nowhere. You don't want to lose refrigeration there, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to make it as simple as possible. And one of the things is to these units, they can take it out of there. Right. All right. So you need to be able to take it out without fear that you will damage anything that's movable on, the, on this shrub. So these units they can take out and service in a shop. Okay.
okay? And they are independent of this truck. They have their own engine, everything. They, and and they, and yeah, the only thing they will have share with this truck is that the truck has to have the fuel tank mounted on the chassis. That's about the only thing. But it has its own fuel, dedicated fuel tank. Never, it's never ever tied in with the truck's fuel tank. Now, it's, right now it's a toss up as to whether you have to get a 609 certification to work on this, or if the 608 will work. Well, they say the 609. But the um, thing is, that's not mo motor vehicle refrigeration. No. That's transport refrigeration. Totally independent of this. The vehicle. The vehicle. Because it is motor vehicle refrigeration. If the engine on this is driving that system, if not. then you need MV. MV 609. Yeah. This, I have personally have worked on them. I fixed both the engine and the refrigeration section. And um, until they tell me otherwise, I'm going to use my regular certification. Yeah. Oh. All right? Because technically that's not motor vehicle. Oh, right. So it's not it's the same. own independent unit. Yes. you fix in the AC. It's just got a diesel engine, the but it just has a diesel engine running it. Yeah. So it had it's totally independent of this. Because if it's a trailer, this trailer will have the gas, the fuel tank right here, and you can put, stick the trailer right there and take this truck, go pick up another trailer. Mm -hmm. And this will be running. Mm -hmm. You know, which is how when they have these big events. And you have people like Jay Kings and yeah. Carlos. The people who have the event will rent a food truck or a food trailer, and the car will just load it up with the stuff, put it there, bag it up, go bring an next one, yeah. put it alongside, and leave it there. That way, they have their truck to go do anything else someplace. Yeah. But uh, but you have your food and your refrigeration system running. And I actually work on some of these where they run out of fuel. Now, it's diesel, so you have to go bleed the injectors. Uh -huh. uh, you got to no. change the fuel filter. When? When you run out of, when you run out of diesel fuel, you got to change the fuel filter. When you do that in the tractors, though. Well, you don't do that in the... In the uh, well, at least Ryan, he's, here. he's talking about them. He's not talking about the vehicle. No, he's talking no. about the same, the same with, principles as diesel. With engine. that there, yeah. remember with that there, you, you, you have time constraints. It's food. All people want to do is get a set of diesel, put it in there, and get the system going. If it can't go because the filter is black, well, so, so be it. Call the service company. So well, well, a lot of times you just got to prime the filter just yeah. to make it so it fills up so that it sucks oil fast. Yeah, but if the filter is bad, call the service Sometimes company. Sometimes you got to change, well, that's uh, the motor, though. That's right. Um, All right, so this is totally independent, so, you know, Hopefully it doesn't have that much amount of crap as this one, this yeah. fuel will have. Hopefully. So truck refrigeration system, liquid nitrogen, carbon dioxide, we're gonna go through this just a little bit. So you, you won't see very much of these. Because um, they're not the safest of gases to work on, guys, because carbon dioxide and nitrogen, unregulated, um, is at a pressure of normally 2,500 psi to 3,500 psi. Okay, so you don't want that coming at you. Oh, nitrogen is a very gas, so you gotta put so much pressure and, on it to make it liquid form. And apart from it being li being at, at that high pressure, it's gonna come out there as a liquid. And you see what you see in the Terminator. What happened to that guy when the nitrogen truck crashed? It's, it's true. This gets on you, and you accidentally hit, let's say it freezes your hand here, yeah, and you accidentally break, right? do that, you're breaking in pieces, a million pieces. There's no, I saw that in the movie. There's no doctor in this land can put you back together. It's a kind of Humpty Dumpty thing. You know? Oh, the king of us. And then you just melt. And then you melt. And there's your flesh rotting on the ground. 
But of course, the, you're, the you're be you need a history because right. people say, hey, you're the only guy who <laughs> who is buried, but you're not dead. <laughs> yeah. you know? So they have a funeral for your hand. <laughs> so see this. Um, normally, when they use this nitrogen and CO2, they're organic. <laughs> You do not have to get an EPA license to work with these things. Ammonia too, you do not have to get an EPA license. So what you do is have the liquid nitrogen in a tank and have a liquid line solenoid, same as a refrigeration system. And as the air you need cooling, they just release that amount of nitrogen or carbon dioxide into the atmosphere surrounding that room or in that room and it cools down whatever is in there. And that dissipates through, you know, through whatever um, holes you have and <laughs> but that's the way they cool. It. So you guys are pretty familiar with dry ice, which is carbon dioxide that um, solid carbon dioxide. So this we normally pack products in, products that are already pre-chilled or pre-frozen or what have you. It's not designed to pull down temperature. Though if you have a can of beer and you put it there, it will pull down the temperature. it's going to pull it down and chances are it may split the can of beer too anyway. Because this here, dry ice, normally exists at about uh, negative 109 degrees. And that's all that because I have seen the results of putting this in a plastic cooler and right where it was sitting it broke the plastic in in a couple of pieces because it's so cold. And when the plastic contract it had yeah, it gets no too place brittle. It had no place to go. So it just popped right around it. So it does not reduce any temperature, it just maintains temperature. Much like the automatic expansion valve systems. They're designed to maintain temperature, not reduce the temperature from <coughs> high to low. Even though they can. Given enough time, it will do it. But you don't want to uh, sit there and wait. But um, if you put the dry ice in water, you're going to get something like a volcano. You know, you're going to get a nice little effect. Reaction. But it's going to be a violent reaction. Now, this is a, what I just told you about. This goes to cooler area. Let's say we were cooling this room. Out, outside there, we have the liquid nitrogen tank, pressure regulator, everything here, solenoid valve with a thermostat in the room. When the thermostat calls for cooling, it energizes the solenoid valves. Liquid nitrogen comes through and it's got, it sprays out of here. Here now, and when this senses it's at the temperature where we want it to be, it open, it goes open circuit, shut down and de-energize the, the solenoid, shuts it down, and wait until the temperature goes up again, and it does it like that. What is See? the temperature of liquid nitrogen? This temperature, um, liquid nitrogen atmosphere should be somewhere around negative 300 and a few wow. degrees, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, well, how many degrees you said? Minus 300. Negative 300. Oh my God! Yeah, you would have shot in that. I saw, I saw, um, like this detective movie type thing, and this guy died like that. You know, we still on truck. Actually, this this chapter concentrates on truck refrigeration. And guys, this is a really good field to get into. It has it has a little bit of extra money in it. You guys, truck refrigeration. You you're gonna not only will you do the truck the refrigeration system, but you will get a chance to learn about the um, the engine part of it, the prime mover as we call it. So you, you'll be learning about diesel systems, diesel engine, 
and then you can become a diesel mechanic so you can service the truck and the refrigeration system. Hopefully, your boss will double up your money. That's wishful thinking, but you know, it's worth thinking. <laughs> bro, you don't need to have your more, bro. You know what you can charge with service on a fucking diesel? Yeah. Just service? Shit. How much you charge for a diesel engine? For that, for, for, for that, for that trailer head right there? Mm -hmm. You charge like two grand. Okay. <laughs> two grand for service, bro. What kind well, of thing? Well, I'll change your mind. I'll change your mind. I'll fill it up. You don't have to, bro. Yeah, charge two grand. Okay. I wouldn't dog him. I tell you. I wouldn't dog him. I'm just for oil change, I would. <laughs> because I am. I did it. I know that child because I work on diesel engines too. You know, Caterpillars, Detroit Diesel, Cummins, right. Fairbanks Mars. I'm actually factory trained on those four. Yeah. You're factory trained on a lot of things. Yeah, ice makers, I'm factory trained on ice, ma ice machine. Yeah. Mitsubishi split system, mm -hmm. I'm factory trained on those. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is a one time, guys. See here, it says these plates need to be recharged. So one time you're gonna recharge the refrigeration system. Really, because it loses, it. this does not actually lose its charge, it loses the temperature, the temperature rises. This is a system um, with what we call eutectic plates. And uh, it's, you're still right in a, Mr. Podia? Yeah. You finish? yeah. And these are. I um, was still writing that. One more second. I'll send that to you. Oh, okay. Okay, you go. And these are the cold plates of this truck here, okay? So, normally, what I do when this truck is in the loading dock, this is. Oh, by the way, this contains um, a liquid in there that, as the temperature gets low, it tends to form crystals. So when you're at a dock, you have the plant there, you're hooking up two lines, one, two. Well, of course, these are interconnected. Yeah. And you're pumping in coal solution into here, and you're pumping out the warm solution back into the system to get cooled up. Eventually, when this gets to the temperature you want it to be, it's gonna be like in a crystalline form. Not 100% crystal form because you you know you're not. It's gonna be like a slushy kind of form, right. soft ice cream type of form, right? Mm -hmm. And they will now disconnect the lines because this is at the temperature they want it at, and you can load all your stuff in here, take it to your delivery point, and it will maintain your food uh, space temperature for a given period of time. These are not long haul. These are short distance um, local. Right. All right? Not over the road so much as it is local. So, those boxes look nice, Santa Claus coming to town. So, here it is, you see? At the loading dock, we recharge it. But um, you won't see much of these anyway. I can't tell you when was the last time I saw one of those anyhow. I never because, saw one of those. You know, if you have a little accident and that get punched too, yeah. you know, you have to repair refrigeration system and that is better you have one little system up here and you just pull it out if it's bad. Yeah, that's so. what I've seen. So truck refrigeration if you have the compressor driven by truck engine. Yeah. This is where you need 609 because it's a truck engine I'm using. All right, and um, the the speed of the compressor 
has, is unrelated to this amount of revolution you're getting out of that engine. Because if you're going full speed and I do not need it, that compressor to go full speed, it's going to regulate itself down with a governor. And actually, what it is is a is a kind of pulley that moves in and out. Right. As like it moves a in, like a it tightens the belt and it varies the speed. So it's a variable pitch pulley. Mm -hmm. All right. Which moves um, in and out. Did everybody sign that? EPA thing? It's right here. Oh, okay. Anybody need it? Yeah, sure. So typically these evaporator, if this is the door to get into the truck from the back, it's towards the cabin cabin and the truck that is on. Those truck that's a fix fixed body. It's not a tractor trailer situation, it's a refrigerated right. truck. Okay, I know what you're okay. talking about. So because you're using the truck's engine to drive that system. That's when you need them on uh, This is when you need section 609. 609, yeah. You know, because you're part of the truck. And guys, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I will get the 609 if you're gonna work on it. And matter of fact, if you're gonna work on any reefer trucks, just to be on the safe side, Get the 609. 609 is a, no, is a separate test? Yeah, the 608, we got it 609. 609 allows you to work on automobiles mm -hmm. or motor vehicle system. MV, motor vehicle systems, and it's all inclusive, you know? So, so it's not that difficult though. No, it's, it's an test. easy test. It's right? more like an endorsement, right? And, um, How many question tests is that 609? <laughs> Probably 25 questions, probably. Yeah, I have no idea. Mainstream lovers. Come on, I do these things since 1996 or when, when they first started with this crap is when I had, I had to do it. You make money? For what? No, when you, when you were doing all this stuff. No, when I was doing the test. Oh. When the forest came out with the Montreal Protocol and everything in 96, I had to do the thing then because I was in the field. And if I wanted refrigerant to buy, I had to go get certification. And that time we used to deal with the R12502 and things. So the real um, chlorinated refrigerant is dangerous. You CFC. Know? So, so usually with these, with these small trucks, they're not, guys, these trucks are not designed for any pull down in, in temperature. It's not designed to reduce temperature. Designed to maintain temperature and go short distances. All right, because this is ultimately this is a truck engine right, the driving product, this. The product that's loaded in is already frozen. Yes, the product is coming out from a rear house. Okay, that's already at temperature desired temperature. Then it goes into this, and these trucks actually will be short haul trucks, local delivery. Because right. you will never set out a truck with this to do um, going to the next state because you never, if the truck breaks down, everything breaks down, even the food, because you have no refrigeration there. A lot of truck drivers used to say it's the worst sheet you can have all the clothes. The best thing ever broke down, you're not operating responsible for that. Yep. These guys love lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Every truck has lettuce on it. You know? Right. Lettuce is a good business. Good day, man. Lettuce, right. lettuce is a good yeah, business. You're going to break now, I doctor now. You're going to break when I tell you to go. It's 11.50. Does it matter? Sir. So what time is it? You still have two minutes. still teaching. You don't walk out. All right. So. Sorry, I'd be on behalf of my classmates. This here. This would be the last rate until break, so you don't have to really write that down. Just yeah. kind of read it. You're gonna pop it tomorrow. And, uh, and I like to read. I got that. Yeah. That was the wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I'm back. Yo, yo, yo. Where's the hand?
Anybody too much charge you from here? Where is it? Five charges. Where is it? Oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. You got it, boss.